No, I don't mind if you help with the boxes, but it's far from the most exciting of tasks. Are you sure? Yes, I like I like lifting boxes. Alright, box lifter activated. Three minutes, alright, let's do this one. Ranger recommend recommended me to go help. And I suppose I have Tank- oh, Tankred, yes. I mean Tankred, sorry, not Yoranjay. Turns out that this is a base of operation of sorts. Those with the final- with final say as to what is included in the ship's manifest can be found here. Oh, okay. Father included, I suspect. is here. Now well, that should be everything. You carried all of that at once. Are you trying to injure yourself? Oh hush, they're lighter than they look, and not everyone has to use your delicate arms. I suppose we would we should let someone know that we finished. Let's go report to him. Yeah, I, I'm. you better credit me. I, I helped bring the box here. Better get some spoils. This is a new area. Nice. There's a lot of small towns around here. There's like the Aporia, uh, there's the Charlie and Hamlet here, and then there's the, oh yeah, the Coco's Forge here. Uh, oh yeah, we've never, we haven't been to the largest Tacon Gamma yet. Eventually we're gonna make it to Tomazane, but... Labyrinthos is pretty cool. Pretty cool area. It's like a giant testing facility to test new life or something like that. Preserve, preserve stuff. Yeah, it's like to preserve stuff and stuff. It's pretty cool. Two hedges. Yes. Okay, never mind. Oops. Ah, it's a neighbor hands, does it? What can I do for you? Brought samples from Charlie and Hamlet. Series one, one zero. Creates are by the entrance. Thank you. I had expected one of my colleagues, but we dreadfully shortened. Shorthand. Just a moment. You're a fortunate children, are you not? Uh, 
how do you know? How from I set your service? Or will a little fodder, I take it. Quite have been friends with your parents since your, your days our days at the studio. Or when you were yeah, hi. Warring hitter and said there. Well it has been quite some time since we've met. It's good to see you again, building your father's new and snow less. You knew our parents when they were young? What were they like? Great and sparing no details. I should like nothing more than to regale you. Alas, I am meant to be in charge here and bring reams of paperwork want for submission. You can help with that and exchange those sorts of stories our parents would never willingly divulge, of course. Hmm, very well then. There happen to be a tree set of documents in need of delivery. So what do you teach each take one? President of waiting to collect these near the southernmost structure. I hope I won't haven't kept her waiting too long. They're my alpha and honestly, I'm certain they will be back soon enough. Do not want to sign those things on. I thought you were meant to be working yet after burner. Oh, we're waiting on supplies right now. Being to worry, he had misplaced his quill. I appreciate your help in seeing these documents in my hands at last. As for your utter task, pray keep this between us, but I sincerely hope you, Scion, succeed. The Exodus is, without a doubt, the most monumental undertaking in the history of the firm, so we must be circumspect in all respects. Risk is a privilege we cannot afford ourselves. At its heart, however, Charlotte hasn't ever been a nation of curious. It would be a tragedy indeed if we were the ones to stymie your pursuit of the truth. Efficient, I dare say. You have a talent for this work. Twins paper only needed to be delivered to us in half a study. Sunday should be returning to any moment. We return with not a scrap of paper remaining on our person, you will note. Both have my tanks. My apologies for sending you on an errand far below your ambitions. Or even as a baby, you struggle out of your swathing clothes. That is quite enough of that. Thank you. It was compromising, compromising stories of our parents that would ask not to reiterate. Of course, of course. I've known your father for so long. I must have something. Hmm. Well, as you know, part of why Levea name garners such respect in Charlotte is your family's stored history. You too can trace your ancestry directly to those who came abroad and you come for hope, a lineage few can claim. I learned how to set much of it myself. It's not as though our forebears found it in our nation. They were simply there when it happened. Nevertheless, it has traditionally been a point of pride. It's why new pronouncements renounced the ways of war and pursue enlightenment, true knowledge and reason has ever been our family's creed. Until your grandfather's time, I. Corcon Luce looked up not, looked not to Nirgrip's words, but his deeds. He asserted in defiance of his peers that choosing to save the great and small from the rising tides was the true mark of our founder's virtue. Perhaps it was his expertise, his knowledge of ancient prophecy, and the fall of civilizations that led him to conclude that to issue conflict at every turn was to consign mankind to his doom. There will ever be conflict and calamity will follow thus. 
to ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. Remember his words well, indeed, our Carlos had lived by that personal creed, and used every means at his disposal to bring succor to those in need. Charlian or no? No one loved and admired your grandfather more than his son. Yet Virginal could not reconcile his deeds with the philosophy of their forebears in his peers. A philosophy in which he believed so fervently, yet made a pariah of his father. Fortuno agonized over this contradiction much for his life. God's father. His son may carry his father's blood, but his choices are his own. Is it not always thus? Oh, it's no fortune as a cranky old goat, so I'm sure you butt heads often. Yet even so, you must know that you are constantly in his thoughts every moment of every day. That is not an exaggeration, the slightest. You should have seen him when you were born, barely recognizable. He was with a kind, dumbfounded grin. I had not seen since you first took a fancy to your mother. He was practically skipping when you told me the news. Take my word for it, he loves you to an embarrassing degree. But he is also frustrating me frustratingly single-minded. Once he's decided that a given action is for the best, he will stay the course no matter who or who what opposes him. A profoundly annoying habit when you're on the other end of it, as I'm sure you will agree. I'll say. Thank you for your insight. When we next we meet our parents, I shall mention that we spoke. Try not to get me into too much trouble now. I need the farm on my side. Speaking of which, I ought to be getting back to work. I have to make sure those specimens you brought make it to their proper places on, or the cranky oat goat will have my head. So we have to be careful of cranky goats, I know. Goat and goats can be you know, dangerous when they're cranky. Hail you there. Hail you tree. Yes, surely Kokol hasn't driven you out of the forge already? No worries. No, however, he has set me to ask that requires more than a single pair of hands, and here you are. I could see at least one of you, but I won't object to more. Unfortunately, Alice and I have prior commitments, and we have delayed too long as it is. What about you? Can you spare time? Yeah, sure, I can go help Greya. Shouldn't take long. In the event that our unquote promised heap of adamantite falls right out of the bloody sky and into my lap, Master Kirkwell wishes me to be ready to put the proverbial hammer to the anvil on moment's notice. For a brook these parts, however, he needs the flames in Kirkwell's forge to burn hotter. He sent me to increase the amount of ether being funneled to his furnace. The full fire expected of ether in Labyrinthos is regulated by an elemental reactor south of here, to which I have borrowed the key. The adjustments will require two people to carry out safely, and I can explain the process when we arrive. This is where we part then. I'm saying in Charlie and Pound that once the Unlimited arrives, not before. This way then. In this facility. I'll be the one to go inside and measure the fire output. When I do, a rather large amount of water expected ether will issue from the vent on the top. I expect this to attract at least a few elementals, which we would both rather not be drawn into the reactor itself. Trust me. Can I ask that you put down any that draw too near? It'll pose you a little trouble, I'm sure. 
over here if you would. I just gotta defend the... I just gotta defend? Alright. Everything goes smoothly out there. Yeah, everything works out. Not as much. No major complications, so to speak, of inside here. And the water aether appears to be venting properly. I expect that Cole will have seen a difference in his forge flames by the time I return. Since I have you, it was not a matter. I'll touch a disgust with you. Nothing terribly important, really something I've been considering. Part of this I shared with everyone, yet you only you have been to Elpis. As we established, refined elementite is a product of Alag, of the Empire's Twilight Year, in fact. It was a material which so much as part of the Alagans. Efforts to extend beyond the bounds of this world. Delamod was of course being the most prominent. Those who would push further expand Elgad's empire, take up both the heavens and the stars above, perhaps the greatest was its infamous technologist, Amon. Do you remember his life as Hermes? I believe he had his own reasons. There is no evidence to suggest that he retained memories of his former life. He only joined the Ashens once the Empire was all but dust, as you know. If not his memory, though, what drove him to pursue the idea of such favor? This may seem far-fetched, but what if souls like mine have a personality to speak? A natural disposition towards which they are inclined. We know with relative certainty that it was the gross decadence and intractural decline of Alec to move Amon to resurrect Emperor Zandi. The Empire's people spoke lightly of death and destruction, experimented on those they deemed beneath them to fill the emptiness in their hearts. In facilitating Zandi's return, Amon provided these languid souls with a means to free themselves from the mire of their own indolence. Would have had not Zandi been convinced by his own death that life itself was meaningless. Amon's desire for his countrymen to conquer the heavens could only be means to do the same, to instill the people with new purpose. Like Hermes before him, Amon was appalled by how those around him lived could never bring himself to believe that those lives were devoid of meaning. Both of them sought that meaning, that hope in the distant stars. Such as my theory, anyway. Ultimately, it is the concepts of their actions which matter. Their motives are in front of them, no moment, and yet. To reach the stars on the wings of Adamantite, 
to travel to the ends of creation and beyond. Promise of hope everlasting, that much I do understand. But enough that music for now. Why don't we see how good Cole is getting? See if you feel those flames blazing from here. Glad you found someone capable, right? Well, there's not much left for you a lot to do. Unless you can conjure up that refined adamantite any faster. I do trust you deliver on your promise, I do only. I hate waiting. I want that adamantite and I want it now. I'm sure you're patient, I assure you. Is there truly nothing else we can assist with in the meantime? Just saying, not so unbearable. We do firm frowns on recreational explosions. So long as they can't prove, I, prove it was predetermined, they did get you done. I've mixed mistakes to make. I'm just gonna return the key to the reactor. I'll have one more look to make sure that nothing has gone wrong, unintentionally or otherwise. Certainly, there are better use of your time, however, I will join you, Charlie, on Hamlet soon. Set, I take it. We finished what we could, delivered supplies, tracked down escaped animals, trivial tasks as they may be. That's enough, don't you think? If there was anything more important still undone, that would be a problem in itself. The vessel is essentially ready for departure. All that remains is to load the final batch of supplies and see everyone on board. Once we've readied the ether burner, that is. Ah, had a feeling we might find you all here. Our consultations with the Loperets, too, have run their course. Pleased I am to say that our researchers' concerns have for the most part been allayed, though some insist on making adjustments to the very end. For their part, Livingway and her peers have graciously offered to stay and keep the people company, lest any lingering queries go unanswered. All that remains is to wait for the refined adamantite. Alphano, are you there? It's me, Cryo. Your special delivery has arrived. Round up everyone and come to the harbor at once. Speak of the devil. Let us go at once. Forgive the intrusion, Master Fortuna. I bring urgent news. A great commotion has broken out in Scholar's Harbor. Your presence is requested with all speed. this delivery be? Oh. I 
I'm sure it's very important, but we cannot accept these without the proper permits. By the Twelve? Surely, these can't all be... Bleeding hellfire! They're bringing them by sea and by air! All these folks in these crates! And more on the way. Got your adamantite right here. A bigger haul than any of these sorry bastards brought, and that's no lie. Yes, because you were charged with seeing the shipments from Gridania and Uldar here, along with your own. Give credit where credit is due. Sounds like the sorry whinging of a sore loser. An hypocrite to boot. Ain't no way a scrawny whelp like you took a dozen steps inside a Dalaman shard. I'll have you know I went all the way to the entrance. Uh, furthermore, it was my contacts that enabled us to enlist the cooperation of the Sky Pirates. Left you outside so you wouldn't get anyone killed, did they? Well then, credit where credit's due, you did a right fine job sitting on your ass. Oh my god, I love how Sickard is calling out in Manilane. <laughs> Take that back! Mike. I will not stick to your level. My, what a grand welcome party. Hancock and Saraban. We come bearing relics both sacred and elegant as well as a few other gifts that may be of help, to be presented with best wishes from the Eastern Alliance. I myself have come with a sacred relic of Raisin Temple. T'was passing fortunate that Senri's Dango craving brought us to Kugane. We arrived precisely as Hancock was making his arrangements. Upon learning of your need, we made haste back to Hell's Lid, with our Dango, never fear, and consulted with the other auspices. All consented to the lending of Tenzin's legendary Phoenix Blade for this noble cause. Suzaku and Seiryu were nevertheless worried that it might be lost in transit, however, and insisted upon accompanying me to Onakoru where I had intended to entrust it to our confederate allies. I thought instead to give it over to Hancock when we chanced to cross paths yet again. But alas, Seiryu remained ill at ease and ordered me see the blade into your hands personally or die trying. We did, of course, need quite the impressive vessel to get it all here in time. Fortunately, our majestic associates have been more than helpful. Tis an honor to join the Warrior of Light on another adventure, they tell me. That is all wonderful to hear, but what of the extraordinary cost? I shudder to think of the ransom we must pay for such a bounty. <laughs> Fret not for your coin purse, young Alphano. Lord Lollarito looks ever towards the profits of the future, and thus the East Aldenar Trading Company went to some lengths to reduce the financial liability. And since the Scions funded the entire venture, not a gill need be rendered up in compensation. Everything is already yours. We funded the venture. When? <laughs> Don't let the name fool you. This coin keeper knows a thing or two about spending. When it comes to capital investiture, a sprinkling of gill here and there will not do. You need enough savings to make waves when it really counts, which is why frugality is paramount. We also have the benefit of a generous patron. Generous being rather an understatement. She 
has supported us from the shadows since the very founding of the Scions. Eh, we even had coffers to fill. Mother! A million. I remain, of course, an entirely neutral party. I simply thought our family's coffers were needlessly full. We can hardly take them with us on your teeny tiny toy boat now, can we? And would be a shame to leave all that hard-earned wealth unspent. Waste not! However did you manage so much in so short a time, though? We expected word to reach only a fraction of our allies. Did I not tell you I have my ways? Erendil, you were involved too. I received a letter from Cryo after we parted ways in Labyrinthus. She explained what the science were trying to accomplish why you might soon require the services of the Gleamers, spread across the world as we are. I pray you do not interpret this as a betrayal of Charlotte. I accept that the Forum's aim in pushing us to our limits was to preserve what knowledge we have, and I bear you no ill will for it. Yet, in collecting that knowledge, what I came to appreciate most about our star is that there remains so much we do not know. That is why I chose to help the Scions, to combat the obliteration of those countless, undiscovered wonders. I held no illusions that they would be less demanding taskmasters. Though, rest assured, if I had, I would have been sorely disappointed. To make a long story short, the whole of the guildship cooperated to ensure your call was heard far and wide. What's this about a ship that can fly to the moon? And why didn't you mention it sooner? The one time you don't beg my aid, your problem's a bloody ship that can fly to the moon. See it. You brought the team. Of course. Garland Ironworks' finest. You need only point us towards my new favorite ship. Oh, I nearly forgot. We stopped by Whirlit before coming here and picked up a package from Gaius. He's still of the mind that actions make for better penance than words, contrite or otherwise. So we offer none of the latter. What he sent is an elegant relic Valens used in his weapons experiments. Has a fair bit of refined adamantite in it, too. As you like us not suspect, we've also brought adamantite for Mordona's Dalamud Shard. I admit to some consternation upon first receiving Kral's message. So few Scions remain at the Rising Stones now. Far too few for such an expedition. However, the Gleaners were able to secure us reinforcements. Idleshire's treasure hunters, not least among them. I oh, know. Ah, the gobby frock fought. Slowfix's gratitude for the safe return of his daughter has not waned, and he gathered his kin to our side with an astounding quickness. The clash between their machina and the elegant defences was a sight to behold. I wager, even you would have been impressed by the magnitude of the gobby booms. Fascinating as all this is, I fail to see how it explains your presence here. Does Razat Han not have more pressing concerns? We do. 
Yet averting the final days would be the most expedient solution. That, and I am indebted to you. Though they chose to take their leave of Thavnen, those you saved in Galimund remain my people. My gratitude is beyond words. It is appropriate that I aid you in kind. If in the doing we bring salvation to others of this star, so much the better. You will recall that I spoke of my father, Midgard Sumer, and his journey across the great expanse. As he traveled betwixt the stars, his resplendent scales drank of the ether in those nigh empty surrounds and imparted to him the strength to persevere. Thinking they might further your cause, I called out to my kin for consent. Ashdaya's answer was silence, as ever. Tiamat and Chris Velgre, however, responded favorably to the suggestion. My sire, too, stirred from his slumber long enough to speak and say, very well. Thus have I brought you his own worm scales. Fit them to your purpose, and seek a worthier fate for us all. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone else so familiar with the unique properties of dragon scales. So I invited myself along. Me. This is so unbelievable. I've gone right back round to believing it again. If we get a 6% gain in efficiency, with all these goodies, we could get 7, no? 10, no? 14 bleeding percent. <gasps> Think of how far we could go. What we could do with that much power. What we could blow up. If Kokol is duly convinced, then it must be true. In which case, the science end of the bargain has been fulfilled. Would you not agree? Yes, Father? I know not what you seek of Hydaelyn, nor for what purpose you would take command of our ship. Yet this much is certain. To do so will be to dictate the fate of this star and the lives upon it, the lives of each and every creature, in their magnitude and their fragility. Do you understand? And are you prepared? We have seen and we have felt how much each life shapes this world. And so we are determined to abandon none. We understand what is at stake, and we are prepared to bear this burden. <sighs> then I... I will bear it with you. I beg you, share your struggles with me, as family. You grasped my fingers with such tiny hands the day you were born. I thought my heart might burst. It was love and happiness beyond expression. Overwhelming. And a conviction 
so powerful that I trembled with something close to rage. I had heard the final days foretold. I swore to myself then and there that I would not let them steal your futures. The great exodus would succeed, must succeed. No sacrifice or sin was worse than the alternative. If anything gave me pause, it was mine own father. The Archon Louisois openly decried Charlien's policies, a perspective which I regarded with increasing disdain as I grew older. Yet even as part of me thought him a fool, perhaps I also hoped that he, of all people, would devise a brilliant means to save my children. Naive hope, but stubborn enough that I could never bring myself to keep you apart. No, that was his doing, when he perished at Cartano. As we pulled that twisted slab of Dalamud from the sea, I remembered the warmth of your newborn touch. Chastened. I vowed never again to suffer any interference in my mission to protect you. No matter that you yourselves wished otherwise. Detest me, fight me tooth and nail, I would suffer it, and more, and be satisfied so long as I could force you onto the ship. <laughs> I was wrong. You two have grown so much stronger and so much wiser than I dared dream. You have earned the right to walk your own path and already begun to do so. Good. Because there are things we care about and people we love and none of them is replaceable. Not a one. It cannot have been an easy journey for you to have come so far. We shall be glad to acquaint you with the finer details someday, once this danger has passed. All that we have seen and heard, that we have felt and learned in our travels. Ours is not a kind world, but it is beautiful. Always. Oh no. Are you quite sure that's wise? After all, someone turns pale and flees the room when he sees so much as an envelope containing word of your adventures. Whatever will happen if he learns what you were really up to. Amelians. children most gravely I owe you an apology as well I assume that it was the Scion's influence that made them so keen to charge headlong into danger yours in particular I see now that said influence instead brought them together with the many fine people gathered here today. In which case, I hope you continue to guide them. If we finish loitering about the harbor, might I suggest we put our plans into motion? People are beginning to look confused. Perhaps you can spare a few words ere they resume the tedious lugging of cargo. You have no small number of friends and admirers here, after all.
a moment for trying out this close to hand. Your assistance is appreciated. Now, in an orderly fashion, if you please. As far as I read that the firm's method of speaking of her is not what I'm I'm curious to hear what those might even tell, but regardless, be warned. inside speak with Charlie. Alright, fair enough. Go down there. Looks like you heard a secret. Thomas A. Marks the beginning of the end. Efforts. Once we do all the two secret odds and star, and hence, we'll embark on our journey to the heavens.
It was designed as a medium sized craft, the better to reduce fuel composition. Interior, ensuring that a truss to weight ratio does not place too great limitation on the freight capacity. The after room, as you know, has been removed has been removed for further modification, but we shall let it reattach it soon enough. I've received work from Cookball and several of our, our allies are working on it with intense fervor. I'm oh, sure, sure to see it done. It was by their expertise that many a prior disaster was averted. If anything, I fear they will not afford us much time for speaking with Highland ere they finish. center of this chamber. Come. To as the atrial sea, heart of that star. Physical and material are one and the same. As the deeper we go, the easier it becomes to pass between said planes. to the center of the star than we have ever dared beyond the Atis scope. So I make no guarantee that you will find her. More of your safety, not too, not so deep in the ethereal sea. We understand, but if we are to live in this world, we have no choice but to try. I know, I only wish we could do more than observe your progress from afar. Jesco's Oculus lands by which we may, we may peer to the trail sea without placing ourselves at hazard lies above us. Do if we can watch and guide you. The swirling dust into our pockets of aether so dense and durable that they can unravel one's soul. If we determine that you are at risk of coming into contact with such pocket, we will recall you of teleportation magic. To that end, it would be best if the familiar of the composition of your souls remain here to assist in assisting with said risk. Please allow me then.
This embrace is memory washed away, leaving only the pretty one's soul or so to believe. Yet what of these memories? If you think of to ask what becomes of them, has to drift on the eternal tides. So the tears that they linger for some time to us associated with strong sentiment in particular. Those death memories of the departed may even coalesce around you for hatred or for love. Just do I caution you to be wary, but also to have faith. This gonna be like a dungeon? You can hear me. Those things are pure malcontent. The residue of lives unfulfilled.
guide you. The ether is too dense. Oh, I'm losing you. This is just a bunch of crystals everywhere. Look at the crystal, uh, crystal road, I guess.
My very essence begins to wane. Sweet, sweet agony. Leave this to her. to deal the coup de gras. Good. <laughs> Watching you struggle against the inevitable is bad comedy. Erase me from existence, soul and all. Do you recall your days as Hermes? of shattered memories. But slowly, the fog began to clear. This was Alpis. And I... I was Hermes. Recurring though it was, I paid this dream little heed. It was only when I was granted the seat and memories of Van Daniel that I knew these visions to be true. They were the memories of Hermes that he himself erased using the power of Kairos. Or so he thought. In his attempt to burn away the events of that fateful day, he succeeded only in searing them more deeply into his soul. My soul. Death failed to expunge them. No matter how many times it came. Rebirth after rebirth. From one Van Daniel to the next. I wonder. Is Emmet Selk adrift somewhere in this ethereal sea? In defeat, finally remembering your time together in Elpis. How it must gall him. To be entrusted with knowledge of the final days, only to be rendered powerless to act upon it. So many lifetimes dedicated to restoring his beloved Amaroth in blissful 
ignorance. Oh, folly. But make no mistake. My life as Hermes is not the reason I invited the world's end. I have lived. I have struggled. I have dredged the very depths of despair. And in the detritus of existence, I found the truth. I served a great ruler, powerful beyond measure. The world, his dominion. Yet even he and his vast empire were destined to fall. To become one with oblivion. At the end of life's journey lies only death. So I ask you, why live at all? We betray, we torment, we murder. We are wicked, spiteful creatures, without exception. If life is so sacred, so precious, why fill it with such misery? Man wallows in a hell of his own making without purpose or meaning. To live is to suffer, and I would end that suffering by my own hand. It matters not if it flies in the face of all believed right and just. Death is the only solution! That is my truth, my answer to the question, and yet, even as the words pass my lips, I am filled with doubt. Has my search reached its end? Was this the only way? After all these years. Is this the answer I was hoping for? The lamentations of the damned. How it vexes me to see your conviction falter at the last. Fantastic. Still clinging to existence, I see. You, you, who champion death so fervently, unwilling to accept your own, refusing to be purified and swept into the sea of souls. As do I. We, prisoners to men, watching as the world is turned to us. Though unlike me, you will be spared the ignorance of having your corpse made a puppet, dance to another's tune. Is that Arsahi? How very astute. But let me be clear, I have not come to consort with the likes of you. Nor have I come to bemoan the state of the world following my untimely demise. In fact, I delight in mankind's downfall and the anguish it brings the savior of the savages. If I played some small part in the chaos, all the better. Not that I was in any position to resist. But to be made accomplice to the betrayal of Lord Xenos. I would die a thousand deaths to exact my vengeance. Now you are at my mercy. I shall drag us both into oblivion, and you will never see the fulfillment of your magnum opus, even should you be reborn. Your desperate search for answers must start again.
I'll do what must be done. <laughs> and what might that be? <laughs> My wish is all but granted. To die and take you all with me. Don't try to follow me. I had more of you people than I could stomach in life. Never mind in death. Likewise, I pray we do not meet again. <laughs> you had better hope. I'm basically, he's telling us not to die. Okay. We're not gonna die, Asahi. Don't worry. We're gonna live. Come. Hydalin is waiting. Brave travelers, I welcome you. We <laughs> make again, not. I know why you have come, yet I would hear you speak your reasons all the same. You created the moon to deliver mankind from the final days. But is that really how it has to end? We do not wish to abandon this world. We want to protect the source and all of its shards. To flee is but one of two paths. The other leadeth to Meteon, far beyond the stars, where she doth chant creation's requiem. Her domain is formed of dynamis, pure, absolute. Where emotion and memory govern all, ether will avail you naught. Meteon hath gathered the pain and despair of countless stars, and to go unprepared is to go unto your doom. We'll beat her. We'll win. I swear it. Is what I might have said once. After everything I've seen, all the times I've succumbed to my own anger and fear. I can no longer pretend that courage and faith will be enough. But are we truly so powerless, that our only choice is to flee? Far from it, my child. Long ago, the inhabitants of myriad stars, many more prosperous than Atheris, sought to free their worlds from life's woes. Sorrow and anger, Conflict and hostility, despair, and even death itself 
But as Meteon reported, every attempt ended in failure. Darkness abideth within every living being and can never be cast out. Neither reason nor faith can challenge this immutable truth. To live is to suffer. And in suffering, find strength and purpose and hope. As you have done so many times before. Thou dost pursue an impossible dream, yet knowing this, you pursue it nevertheless. And thou hast learned to depend on others as they do thee. Thy yearning for the power to save the powerless hath ever driven thee to greater heights. Thou hast grown strong. Though those closest to thee no longer walketh by thy side, their love remaineth thy guiding light. For duty's sake, thou hast been bound by truths unutterable time and time again. Yet thy heart hath never wavered, as thy companions will attest. In thy pursuit of mysteries great, all thou believest is brought into question. Undaunted, thy thirst for knowledge remaineth unquenched. The fires of hatred that once burned in thy heart burneth no more. From their ashes doth spring the light of love, warm and pure. As witness to black calamity, thou despaired at man's helplessness. Resolved, thou didst unite a distant world on the brink of collapse. And thou, my champion, when all did seem lost, thou never abandoned hope. For every trial and every foe that did bar thy way, thou hast proven equal to the challenge, drawing courage from the many bonds forged on thy journey. You have all known despair, and though the end approaches, you walk on, heads held high. Therein lieth your power the strength to silence the song of oblivion. Then there is a means to confront her. Yes, if you should prove yourselves worthy. Hark! to send mortals to the edge of the universe. Should you fail, there will be no second chance. As the will of the star, I ask of you this. Do you possess the fortitude to stand firm when all around you does crumble? Do you possess the faith to vanquish despair itself? Should you lack the strength to best a supreme deity, I cannot allow you to make the journey. You must leave this star and never return. Sounds straightforward enough. Aye, no room for confusion there. In any case, we've come too far to back down now. I am of the same mind. 
What power I have, I shall bring to bear. The three of you seem to be forgetting who we're up against. It's not every day we battle a divine being of untold power. Well, not quite every day. Do try not to get underfoot. Needless to say, there'll be no margin for error. Let us hold nothing back. For the people of this world and those beyond the rift. Alas, the question I posed to thee in Elpis hath remained unanswered these long years. I would hear thy response, warrior of light, shouldst thou emerge victorious. This is going to be a raid, isn't it? Or should I go with randoms? A change of heart. May the test continue. the AOE was going to be.
them. Still gonna hit. Probably just a friend. Huh? My blade!
Did not have enough HP to tank that last hit. This was a fun raid. I like this raid. Probably my favorite. Favorite raid in Endwalker so far. At last, man has the strength to. Be happening. <laughs> Though my power is in constant flux, I have always kept a reserve for this very moment. It was a true test of your prowess. You have done well. There is one thing I must ask. By sundering the world into 14 shards, the ether of all living beings too was divided. This reduction would in theory allow us to more easily interact with Dynamis. Having seen mankind brought to the very precipice of extinction, you wished for us to develop a means to overcome despair. You believed we had the potential, 
and sundered all creation to see it fulfilled, to deliver us to that swirling maelstrom of dynamis in which our foe hides, and grant us the power to defeat her once and for all. Is this not true? It is as thou sayest. Twas the trial to which I subjected mankind, and it hath led to untold bloodshed and suffering. There was no kindness, nor justice in the tragedy I wrought. When confronted with the almighty Zodiac, my only recourse was rend him and the world asunder, that his power be diminished for a time. And so it came to pass. Now you, my chosen, have surpassed my expectations. Surpassed me. I entrust the fate of the universe unto you. This crystal contains the memory of Meteon's passage through the stars. Deliver it unto the Loperets. They will guide you to her. Though they may be capable of crossing great distances, there is a vast difference between traveling to the moon and the furthermost reaches of the great expanse. And unlike Meteon, we cannot simply soar on waves of dynamis to our destination. Indeed. To make such a journey would require an astronomical amount of ether. But a solution lieth close at hand. Of course. Yes, my child. Ever since I became the will of the star, the ether drawn here had slowly crystallized. They who have answered my call know it well. While I have remained hidden, it hath become the embodiment of the planet's will in my place. A faceless, omnipotent force of nature. The Mother Crystal. Our final hope. The fulfillment of this task doth fall to you, my chosen. Now, heed these words. Darkness and light, despair and hope. As goeth one, so goeth the other. Become light, become hope. a gift for thee. Come closer. Long have I searched for a means to safeguard the future of this star. Though I knew failure after failure, by recalling thy tales and my promise to thee, I found the strength to carry on. Though the world is ever changing, thy thirst for adventure hath never waned. Thine unshakable resolve never ceases to amaze, to inspire. As a mark of my gratitude, I bestow this final gift. Thou dost possess the crystal of Azam, yes? As Hydaelyn, I reside over the forces of stasis, tranquility, peace. The laws which impart stability to existence itself. I will weave this self-same power into the crystal, granting thee mastery over matter, to give form to the formless. Use it wisely, for it will not last indefinitely. 
As thou hast seen on thy journey through the ethereal sea, souls are drawn to thee. Mayhap this trait will prove to be a boon rather than a hindrance. It is thy hopes and prayers that enable Asm's invocations and give them life. So keep them close, but pray, remember this. When the way forward is hidden, even from the mind's eye, look not to the invocation, but within yourself. These were the words of the crystal's original bearer. With that, my work is finished. Fulfill our promise. Right the wrongs committed when the world was yet whole. Silence the song of oblivion. Teach her a brighter melody. Show her our journey is far from over. We will find our way, the knot. See you well, though we could roughly place your soul as deep as you went. We could neither see you nor hear you. Fluctuation in your hatred near the end gave me a fright. What in the world happened? Uh, I have Heidelin's power now. Long story short. Say hi to Linez. No, there's no time to feel our feelings. We must carry out Hyla's will without delay. We'll meet Meteon if it's the last thing we do. If you wouldn't mind handling over the crystal that is the fancy navigatory thing. The edge of the universe, where it congregates the despair of countless stars, we are determined to see this true. We are. Should words fail us, we will fight to the bitter end. I know that it pains you to accept this, but that I need ask more, nothing more of you. Yet we have only two means to travel the great expense, the moon and the Charlands Ark. I'm too aware that without both of them, there will be no exodus. I nevertheless beg you to honor the agreement we made. The firm's decision will be honored. You have earned the right to use the ship as you see fit. 
and I could not rescind it, even if I wanted to. As it happens, I do not, and I would do all within my power to aid your cause. It's settled. I'm going to suggest you rest a while. Proving oneself to Highland is never easy, despite our unparalleled genius. We need a day to make a necessary calculation. You might as well take advantage of it. And chart a course through the sea of stars in a single day, ye gods. Shall we head above ground for some fresh air then? Perhaps an hour? Students have ventured far and wide, but never quite so deep as that. Are you expressing any after effects from your prolonged exposure, nausea, dizziness, hauntings? Hmm. Well, have a pleasant sleep, and if you do experience any unusual phenomena, please let me know. I shall add it to your records. Are you chamber? Yes. Some time, indeed, yes, for you, at least. Believe me, I'd meant to get some yet proper sleep, but here we are, drifting along instead. Well, well, you too, and so we remain. Watch and wonder. <laughs> yes, indeed. To begin, we first must see the end. have determined Mithion's location. Been asked to get out to Rostra. I'll meet you there along with the others.
appears to be the prison accounted for. Good. Is there enough for us to deduce the whereabouts of Mechon by means of the crystal bequeathed by Heidelin herself? Where's the creation? It's a place far beyond the moon, in the fairest reaches of the sea of the stars, at the edge of the creation. A veritable Ultima tool. Oh, indeed. How then are we to reach it? Interior, with its advanced propulsion system, the moon is capable of delivering you into an Ultima tool, but the myriad of other facilities housed within greatly impede travel to the the sea of stars. Here the muttered crystal may not possess ether enough to bear so massive a vessel to our destination and back. However, if we integrate our hyperhopper into your afterburner, we will be able to fire things up and jump your way to the end of the universe in no time. What does this mean? Bear in mind, this decision was not made solely at my discretion, but with the consent of the firm. During the Lord's proposal, the firm was faced with a grave decision. Commit the Ark to this endeavor would mean abandoning both our plans to evacuate the moon and to resettle in the other summer. Needless to say, the proposition invited fierce debate. In the end, however, the firm was swayed by the simple fact that Heidelin believed he possessed the strength needed to overcome this crisis. The greatest that this was, after all, a plan Heidelin's own making. Therefore, if the eleventh power should prefer another mean by which we may seek salvation, we would be fools to dismiss it and out of hand. Indeed, she sacrificed everything, her very existence, to avert the destruction of the star. chosen to place our faith in Heidelin and you. The Ark will be made ready for your voyage into, into Ultima Tool. One of all people that have labored so tirelessly to prepare the evacuation, they must be furious. They will not be so sure. They have not forgotten your deeds on Magna Iglesias, nor did your instrumental role in orchestrating the delivery of Adamantite go unnoticed. Though the people do not protest, on the contrary, they have expressed unwavering support for you and your mission. Are the Lopers too willing to abandon the Exodus? Were you not listening when we said we were born of Heidelin's love for Terrace and its people? If it means our sure survival, we would do anything to help. And you'll most certainly have need of your expertise or going. There's no guarantee Ultima Tool is a place that supports life. Otherwise, Vexen and Prolem are no how can remain. So if Heidelin chose us to lead the way to Mithion, why else would she be a few with Crystal only we can decipher? And more importantly, we were perfectly content to evacuate the Terrace until you brought us here. Rinjin and I were in the of the place, so what choice do we have but to save it? Of course, none of this is possible to tune the science, so I must ask, are you certain you wish to do this? Well, we've come this far. We shall inform the firm of your decision and begin preparation to bolster the Ark with the uh, Hyper Hopper. The Lopers will coordinate it with the Islapur contingent to have the necessary components to transport via the Tower of Babel. Of course, it will take time until the work is complete.
for now, I'm pretty to take your ease. It would seem there is nothing to do but rest and prepare, shall we? Leave nothing undone. Could do it is difficult to conceive of how one can best repair the main work dynamics governs all. The plan will be back before you know it. I sort of terribly hope so. We'll be praying for your safe return, we have. It will affect the dynamics for the better. But that's settled. We should get some rest and make the most of the time we've been afforded. Hmm. The meeting's over, is it? Been there for so long, I started worrying. What did they have to say? Everything's gonna be good. We're heading to the end of the universe. The edge of creation, I see. We're still sure everything will remain in order until they return. And you will return, right? Actually, can I borrow you for a moment? Huh. Looks like your plans for the interim are decided then. Two of you have finished. Meet us back at Bellison and Idex. Alright. Tataru just wants to speak to me? Okay. Come with me, Dagger. I have something to show you. Boutique. Make an extra effort to strive the most functional stylish clothing. One can ask why not I'm playing favorites, but you are the word of light. But you can add something like anything I've created before, and that I wouldn't be able to do it alone. The, the world's finest artisans are finally complete in my care for defining a masterpiece. Just begging to be seized. With the help of one, some tavernier and refugees. Shop here in Charlemagne. I could never charge you for any of your works, perish in town. Alright, then come along. Be ready to open shortly. So I brought you here to be our fair first patron. Would you mind waiting here a moment longer?
Imagine Yadana would also wish to offer her regards. Alas, after delivering our dragon scales to the engineers, she remains just as with her work on the afterburner. While overseeing matters in Rethaton, it is a rather convenient means to keep abreast of developments pertaining to final days or anything else. So allows me, after fashion, to watch over my people in the distant land. I was hoping you'd stop by. I can't thank you enough for allowing your Tarzan to work with me here at the boutique. Please, it is I who should be thanking you. This Tavashi has restored a sense of normalcy to their lives. You have blessed them with newfound purpose and a means by which to support themselves in these troubled times. It's more when they return, last return home at Rezazan, experience and knowledge you have gained, and your employer will no doubt prove a boon to your history. I express my gratitude for granting them this opportunity. It's a no pretty evening for me as well, believe you me. Riches and have taught me so much about Tavnir craftsmanship, their resourcefulness and ingenuity. Pray you every success in your endeavor, Mistress Tatar. soon be attempted. It was only then I fully understood why my father called Star the last bastion of hope. Indeed, it was the last bastion for the flame of every other star he encountered had likely been extinguished. The bound was dark, the light of bringing life must have been blinding in its splendor. You journey into the heavens to protect that light. May the scales of my kin serve you well. Faith you will prevail and restore peace and tranquility to the star. I would like to revisit Red Zatan when this is all over. And we should be honored to receive you. There's still much at Red Zatan you have yet to see. Forgive me, but I must take my leave. Fare you well, and remember, the people of the start have not yet forgiven hope. doing here? Part of me is what you're after, I suggest last stand.
big switch. Wedgie and Bigzy. The tower. Hey, this bitch. I take it work on that work proceeds apace. Uh, it does indeed. Collaborating with the greatest minds of Charlion and Rats to Han has been rewarding. That's to say nothing of what we've learned from the Law Prince. Big Arc is unlike anything we've ever had the pleasure to work on. Even Nero was rendered speechless on more than one occasion. Can't wait for you to see it. And you'll never guess who paid us the visit before we came to Australian Alpha. I think he says the coming danger and returned to check on us. He was always one to turn up in time of need, and I suppose that's why he decided to join us here in Trillion. It's hard to believe we have the means to send you off on a great expanse to, through the far distant known reaches of well everything. Never thought I'd live to see such marvel, yet here I am. You and the Sunhands are the catalyst that sparks the need for these great innovations. Pleased to meet you. You must look to one letter for strength and succor.
don't, I don't like the look on it though. Nah, I don't like this. Who's in the right way? Well, because he is next time on, I'm gonna see 14.